Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going through the best loadouts to help you rank up quickly. So, first up, we're going to start with the light. I'm going to put on the V95 here. The V95 is very, very strong, and so is the stun gun. So, these two together are very, very powerful, and they're also both quite close range. For the specialization, I'd recommend going for the cloaking device or the evasive dash. I'd stay away from the grappling hook if you're using the V95, just because that's kind of paired better with things that have a bit more range to them, and the V95 doesn't really have that much range. But it's up to you if you want to go for the evasive dash or the cloaking device here. And then it's also up to you what you want to go for the gadgets. I like the frag grenade and the breach charge just because I like having some extra destructive capabilities, but you know, you can put on like glitch grenades and flashbangs if you like those, those two would probably be up to you. So this is definitely going to be a very very strong loadout, just the V95 and the stun gun paired with whatever you want and either the cloaking device and the evasive dash, that's going to be very very strong. And then for a more ranged loadout you can either go for the LH1, the thing with the LH1 is that it's got a lot of camera shake to it, but if you can get over the camera shake, it's still a very, very powerful weapon that can absolutely delete enemies if you can hit your shots. And again, it does have that longer range, so it does pair well with the grappling hook, but you can also just go with the evasive dash or the cloaking device if you want, but the grappling hook tends to pair better with things that have longer ranges, like the LH1 or the sniper. You can also go with the sniper here. If you've got really, really good aim and you can be hitting those headshots with this thing, this is going to be very, very powerful. It can one-shot lights, so it's definitely very, very strong. So I'd go with the grappling hook and the sniper, or the LH1, for those longer ranges, because all of those weapons are very strong. And then for the closer ranges, I'd go with the cloaking device or the evasive dash, and then also the V95, because that's obviously very strong. The stun gun you're probably pretty much always going to want on. Right now, it's, this is very, very strong. If you shoot this at someone, it basically takes them out of the fight, especially if you shoot them in the back. They're not going to be able to do a whole lot about it, and you're just probably going to get a free kill there. And then again, you can pair it with whatever two gadgets you want. So that's it for the light. Those are the loadouts I would recommend. It is worth saying that whatever you like using is probably what you should use. Like, if you really, really don't like the V95, then don't use the V95. You're, you're gonna be better with the things that you like than with the things that you don't like. So now that that's out of the way, I'm going to go into the medium. So this is a loadout I like to play a bit more menacingly. You're a bit more of a menace with this loadout. I'm gonna show a kind of all-out support one in a second. But I like the Guardian Turret and the Explosive Mines. Um, the explosive mines I like putting on cash outs, so if someone goes to steal it they blow up, or they have to blow up the mines first, which does delay them a little bit. And then I also like putting these on totems, if someone goes to defibrillate their enemy, sometimes they just blow up, and that's very very nice, because, you know, when enemies defibrillate the other enemies, it's very very annoying, and this can prevent that in a lot of situations. We've got a lot of kills with this thing. And then also the Guardian Turret is, you know, it's okay. I just quite like it because it's a distraction and it does tend to delay the enemies. And if there are like, if it's a 3v3, the Guardian Turret turns it into like a 3.2v3 and I just quite like that. For the weapon, you can go with the AKM, the revolver, or the shotgun. The grenade launcher is kind of niche, and then the FCAR and the riot shield would be a bit weaker, I would say. But the AKM, revolver, and shotgun, they're all quite strong if you can hit your shots with them. And then the grenade launcher you can use as well if you want, and it kind of stay away from the FCAR or the riot shield. For the gadgets, you want the defibrillator on. If you're playing medium, just do everyone a favor and put the defibrillator on. That's the one thing that every medium should have on the same way every light should have the stun gun on. So this thing, you know, just put that on. And then for the last gadget, I've got the zipline on. Generally, you want to go with the zipline or the jump pad here for some movement. But, you know, you can go with something else if you like. Like maybe the APS turret, so you have two turrets. That's just kind of cool, maybe. But I do like having that zipline for that extra movement. Especially if it's like suspended structures or something and the enemies destroyed the ziplines. This is pretty much going to be your only way to get up there. Unless you've got like a heavy with an RPG and they can just blow the whole thing up. Then this is going to be your only way up. And then for the other medium loadout, it's, I'm going to go with the healing beam, and I'm going to go with the sonar grenades. And this is like the all-out support one. You've got the healing beam to heal your teammates after you defibrillate them. Defibrillator and healing beam pair together quite well. You've got the sonar grenades just to tell where the enemies are. This thing is super useful. And then you've got the zipline for movement as well. So this entire kit is like all-out support. So I do kind of like switching between them. But both of these are going to be quite strong in different situations, and obviously this one is a bit more aggressive than the other one, but they are both very, very good, and I do both, and I do run both of them. So that's going to be it for the medium. And then we come to the heavy. 
and the heavy's got two options up close. You can go with the shotgun and you can go with the flamethrower. I've seen a lot of people saying the flamethrower is OP. It really isn't. It's it's good, but you know, if you're having a shootout with someone and they've got a shotgun and you've got a flamethrower, you're gonna lose that fight. The shotgun's a lot better than the flamethrower. It absolutely deletes people up close. Whereas with the flamethrower, you know, you have to shoot them and hope they don't have the best aim so that you kill them first. So you can go for the flamethrower if you want. It is good, but I think the shotgun is a lot better. This thing absolutely deletes people up close. And because it's a close ranged weapon, I like using the charge and slam so I can kind of cover some distance and maybe finish someone off if I get them low from before where the shotgun isn't really doing enough damage from far away. So I can just use this to close the distance and then get the finish. If you don't want to go up close, then the Lewis gun and the M60 are both quite good as well. You can just take your pick here. They both do have kind of hard recoil patterns to learn. But if you learn them, I'm sure they're very, very good weapons. I just haven't taken the time to learn them yet, but these are both good weapons. For the sledgehammer, you know, the shotgun or the flamethrower is just going to be better up close. And then you've got the grenade launcher as well. This grenade launcher is weird in that it bounces once and then blows up. So if you've ever played Overwatch and you've played Junkrat, you'll know Junkrat's explosive bounce twice and then blow up. So this is kind of like that, but it only bounces once and then on the second, on the second hit, it blows up. So... It's kind of hard to use, you're gonna have to be really good at like judging angles and you know the, the velocity of other players to be able to get directive hits on this, but you can use that if you want. But for now, the shotgun's definitely very very strong, so I like to use that. For the gadgets, RPG is very very good, you probably want the RPG on the heavy, it's good for you know killing lights and also for blowing stuff up. It one shots lights if you didn't know that. So it does have one-shot potential, and it does do a lot of damage to heavies and to mediums as well. I like having the dome shield on. You can go for the barricade or just something else. The barricades are kind of interesting in that you can place as many of them as you want. So if you place two of them and then wait for the next two cooldowns, you can place another two and you can have four of them. The maximum I've got is six. I'm not sure how many of them you can actually place, but you can place a lot of them, which can be good for really, really reinforcing buildings. But again, I do kind of like having the dome shield. And then I like the C4 just for putting it on cash outs. If someone tries to steal it, I can just blow it up and get a kill. I've got a lot of kills from blowing this thing up when people are on cash outs because when you put proximity mines on cash outs, people know to like blow it up first or they just stay far enough away from it. But if you've got C4 on a cash out, sometimes they think you're not going to blow it up and then they just die and it's great and funny. So I would say keep the RPG on, but you can kind of go with whatever you want here. Like if you like flashbangs and like pyro mines, you can put those on as well. But I like having the dome shield and the C4. And then for the specialization, again, I like having the charge and slam to cover that distance with a close ranged weapon. But you can also go for the mesh shield. The mesh shield's very, very, very strong, especially if you've got, if you've got a coordinated team. This thing is super powerful. It's got a lot of health to it, so it takes a while to destroy. And then, you know, if you really, really want to, you can go for the goo gun, but I'd say one of the other things would serve you better. So yeah, I think that's going to be about it. This is pretty much just the meta. Like, the shotgun here is very, very, very good. The mesh shield is very strong as well. And then we come to the medium, the sonar grenades, the zipline defibrillator, and the healing beam. These are all super strong. And then for the light, you've got the V95 and the stun gun, and both of those are very, very strong as well. So again, you should use whatever you like. I don't actually really like the V95 just because it's a semi-auto weapon, so I'm, I'm just not able to constantly be hitting that trigger button as fast as I can to get that super high fire rate. I, I just can't really do that while keeping my aim on track. So I do prefer the XP-54. So again, just use whatever you like using because a lot of the stuff in this game is pretty balanced. The one thing that is very, very weak, I think, is the FCAR. That's probably the weakest thing in the entire game, but also it's not that weak. You can use it if you want. So you should just use whatever you like using. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell.